Good afternoon. It is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns. Oh, and today we just have a few things. I don't have anything finished. Um, do have a bit of a gripe to tell you about, but um, in the long run, it'll be something that's worth worth doing anyway. Um, on this channel you're going to find all kinds of strange things because you know I'm just all over the place. I have craft ADD. Um, I am going to start incorporating some more of my crafts, those kind of things, just because I find it fun. Alright guys, if you like the content on this channel I would hope that you would like, subscribe, and ring that bell. That way you'll get notifications of any time there is a new video. All right. Yeah, as you know, I've been working on the Tunisian, um, what I am calling the, it is a lacy full stitch. I have that much so far. Um, I have planned on working on it a lot longer, but um, there is a reason that I had to put it aside, and you will learn about that in a bit. Okay, the other thing I've been working on is the honeycomb, painted honeycomb afghan. And as you can see, I've changed to the second color, which is a lighter blue. This one, I believe, is teal by basic, and this one is light teal by basic. And then the, the light color, it, it's not a white white, it's called antique white. That is one of my favorite colors to use, but um, that's where I was at last time, and that's how far I got. And like I said, I have planned on working on these two projects for the entire month of April to get them finished, but there came along a little bit of an issue. And here's the issue. You know the hats that we were making for the kids, that the kids had colored the hats, the colors that they wanted, and I had made, I think, 27 last month. Um, turned them in beginning of this month. Well, I had questioned the person who put the pattern out, gave us a to use. I said, are you sure that this is the correct pattern? Because it is awful big for a child who is probably five to six years old. You know, some may have been kept back a little older, but I was concerned because I didn't think the pattern was a child size hat. It is not. It is a pattern made for adults. So every one of us that made hats has to redo our hats. I'm not happy. Um, because like I said, I had questioned her and asked her several times, are you sure that is correct? She was positive. So when I went to pick up my hats, she handed me this hat to use as an example. And she said, we tried it on so-and-so's um, five-year-old and it fits her perfectly. I said, did you try it on other children? You know, five to six years old. Boys, no. Well, the hat that she gave me is not the pattern. Um, well, it is the pattern, but it is minus three rows of the pattern. I said, do you want us to do the whole pattern or not? Because this hat doesn't look like it's the full pattern. She said, it is the full pattern. Of course, you know, I took it home, like she'd asked. And it is not the full pattern, it is minus three rows. So I am using a pattern that I know is for the size of a child, five to eight years old. Um, and then I'm just going to do the ribbing, the last three rows of it. You know, so, um, yeah, I'm not happy. Um, I knew the pattern was incorrect and asked. Asked her to double check. Yeah, well, it is an adult hat pattern. And it would be fine if the person had given us gauge 
or the circumference of the hat. You know, I can I can do hat math. I mean, it's not that hard. I could do hat math and figure it out using that pattern if I had uh, the correct information. So that is the reason gauge is important. Even if you are doing a hat, if a hat gives you gauge, there is a reason that they give you the gauge. It is so that you know whether or not you need to go up or down on book size. Um, for me to make this a child size pattern, I would have to use a D hook, and I'm not using a D hook with worsted weight. Not going to do it. So um, that is my little bit of a rant. So far I have six, seven hats done. Um, what I did the past couple of days was just sit, take the um, Ziploc bags, take the hats apart, roll it up into balls and leave them all stuck in there together with the pictures so I could just grab a bag, put it together, and then go on. So yeah, I am a little upset. But what are you going to do? Um, and if it had not been for children, I would not have done it. I would not be redoing them. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit perturbed about that. But I know right now, you know, Crystal back a day had um, her one million. She was, met the one million mark. Congratulations, Crystal, if you ever see this. If you don't, fine. Congratulations anyway. Um, but she, is, uh, she has done a shawl for the life of me. I can't think of the name of it. But it's one of those very complex shawls. Um, she's doing it in seven parts. And uh, she had uh, chosen Chandy's Expression Fiber Art Yarn for it in, I think, seven different colors. Well, I wasn't going to do it. Well, let me put it this way. I was going to do it, but I was going to go through and look for yarns. And then I thought, with having to redo these hats, I don't think I'm going to have time to do it. But you know what? I'm going to do it. Um, it may take me a little bit longer to get to it. I haven't started it yet. But I did decide that I'm going to use Mandela yarn um, in the color Hercules. This is a sparkle yarn. don't know if you can see that little bit of a sparkle. Hopefully the camera will catch it. It does have a little bit of sparkle in it. I don't know that I'm going to color, color control it. I think I'm just going to let it work up the way that it is going to. I have quite a few of these in the Hercules. Um, when Walmart had marked them down to a dollar, I picked up every single one of them that they had for a dollar. Whether it was Hercules, Wizard, um, Chimera, whatever it was, I picked up every one of them. So, um, I do have quite a few of these in the Hercules color, and I am going to use that color to make that shawl. What do I want to, I want to call it something in my mind. I swear. I'll put it up on the screen if I can remember what she's calling it. And I'll leave a link down to the first part of the tutorial um, down below as well for you if you haven't, although I don't know how you wouldn't know about it. It's crystal for crying out loud. Um, I don't know how you wouldn't know about this shawl. I am glad that she has done it. I do like complex shawls. I think it's going to be beautiful regardless of whatever anyone uses for the shawl. Whether you use a worsted weight, a, you know, a lace weight, whatever. I think it's going to be a beautiful shawl. So yes, I am going to do that. Um, the Prayer Shawl Ministry has asked for more shawls. Although they said they didn't want any more. So who knows what what are you going to do? Um, they change their minds all the time. So yeah, I am planning on doing that as well. Um, if I get the hats done, I get them done. If not, then they'll have to wait. It's just how it is. And you know, I had been working on my shirt out of that comfy cotton. And that is put on a back burner again, once again. I had asked for a lot of um, 
your suggestions on how you keep track of your whips and those kind of things. I have not gotten to the comments yet simply because of the things that I've been doing in and around the house. Spring is coming so I want to plant a few plants and uh, mostly container gardening um, simply because we don't have the topsoil yet. Um, I don't know if many of you know my contractor and I have had some issues. I've asked him to correct a few things. He's not corrected them yet. And so since I'm not happy with that, um, let me put it this way. He had sent me a bill saying that I owed him a quarter of a million dollars. And I said, I don't think that's correct. Um, he said, no, it's correct. Um, I have a friend who is a bookkeeper who has gone through all of the invoices, statements, everything he's given me, and they don't add up to what I've already given him. So I am suing him for fraud, and there are quite a few issues that needed to be corrected in the house. So for the next couple of years, I'm looking at a lawsuit. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of where that's at with the house. Um, Topsoil, um, the company he used, is the only one around here that does topsoil. I had tried to contact them to get some topsoil delivered, um, but because he owes them at this address, they will not um, bring topsoil, which I can understand that. But um, like I said, what the bills show, invoices, everything, I have overpaid him, plus paid him his 20% for the cost of the house. So, uh, yeah, we'll just see where that goes over the next couple of years. Isn't that fun? Um, and for the longest time, I didn't have a receipt so that I could refill the propane gas. Um, I did contact the propane company, gas company, and they already had a copy of that um, receipt showing I do own the tank. Since it's buried, if you do not have proof of ownership of the tank, they will not put any more propane into it. Um, that happened because of a lawsuit a couple of years, probably about 15 years ago, um, that there was someone who was renting a house they had had the propane tank refilled, paid for it, but the landlord um, wanted them evicted. So the way that he had them evicted was he had the propane tank dug up and removed. Um, so they couldn't heat the house, cook food with the gas stove, that kind of thing. So now the gas company wants to make sure that whoever is filling the propane tank actually owns the propane tank. It was a big issue around here. So that's kind of where things are at. Um, yeah. All right. You ready for a little water incarnation? I know I am because it's been a week. Comic featuring Superman's debut. Sells for record-breaking $6 million. How I wish I'd have kept mine. A copy of the comic book that introduced Superman to the world became the world's most expensive comic book when it fetched $6, $8, $6, a $6 million act auction. Heritage Auction said the copy of Action Comics number 1, the 1938 comic book featuring the first appearance of Superman, attracted a record-breaking high bid of $6 million at Thursday's auction. And yes, I did have a copy of it. My father had it and left it to me. The comic book featuring the iconic Man of Steel on its cover was inspected by collectible grading service CGC and given a grade of very fine, plus 8.5, making it the third highest graded copy of Action Comics number one known to still exist. CGC said only about 100 copies of the comic are believed to still exist, as the service has only graded 78 copies over the years. The 
comic was published by National Allied Publications, the predecessor to the modern-day DC Comics. Previous record for the most expensive comic book was a copy of Superman No. 1 that sold privately for $5.3 million in 2022. The previous most expensive comic book sold at auction was a CGC Near Mint 9.6 copy of Amazing Fantasy No. 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, which sold for $3.6 million in September of 2021. And unfortunately, there are no links. Utah police officer dive tackles fleeing pig. And there's video. I think. I think this is the one where there's video. A Utah police officer was caught on camera dive tackling a pig running loose through a residential neighborhood. Grantsville police said the three pigs had been on the loose for several days, and the poor sign, poor kind, Perpetrators were accused of leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. I'm sure they did. I'd say about a week ago we got a call about a couple of loose pigs running around town, getting into people's yards and going through their gardens, going through their an animal paddocks and things like that. Officer Corey Cooper told KSTU-TV. Cooper said he and about four other officers responded when the pigs were spotted in a neighborhood on Thursday. Cooper was caught on video doing a dive tackle to catch one of the four-legged fugitives. Pigs are notorious for escape escaping, the officer said. I've known a lot of people who've had them, and I've had some experience chasing pigs down when they get out. We have another escape. It's a canine escape. 100 Huskies escape. Dog cafe and run through... Chinese Mall. The do dogs had their day at a Chinese mall when a hundred huskies escaped from a pet cafe and ran loose through the shopping center. Workers at the cafe in Shenzhen, Kuaidong, said someone left a door open, open, allowing 100 canines to run out into the shopping mall, surprising and delighting shoppers. Cafe employees said the dogs were excited because the business owner was visiting the cafe after a prolonged absence. Workers ran after the dogs and were able to round up the excited animals after a prolonged indoor chase. And it's awful cute seeing those huskies running through the mall. Now, we all know that art is in the, bea in the eyes of the beholder. Whoever is looking at art determines whether it is beautiful or not. Hikers complain of trash sculptures installed at Arkansas State Park. Hikers who frequent the trails at an Arkansas State Park Let me let that run through. Sorry about that. Didn't, didn't silence my phone. Hikers who frequent the trails at an Arkansas state park are protesting the installation of sculptures that have been compared to a blob and the gaudy artwork from the film Beetlejuice. A petition that amassed nearly 3,000 signatures on change.org calling for the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism to stop installing sculptures by the side trails of Pinnacle Mountain State Park and other state parks. These park serves as sanctuaries for both wildlife and humans alike, offering respite from urban life and an opportunity to reconnect with nature. Petition author Joshua Hamilton wrote, The introduction of art installations disrupts this harmony. The visual impact can be jarring against the backdrop of natural scenery, altering visitors' experiencing experiences and potentially disturbing local ecosystems. 
for ecosystems. Hamilton said the sculptures at Binnacle Mountain State Park are particularly unappealing. Looks like a jumble of trash. Looks like someone took tornado wreckage, stuck it up there on a slab of concrete, he told KATV. Matt Sealing, a mountain biker and visitor to the park, said he couldn't even identify what one sculpture was meant to represent. Beyond a blob of something. Hamilton said several hikers have told him the sculptures resemble the gaudy artwork from the 1988 film Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, 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 Hamilton quipped, and watch out for the sandworms. The Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism has not responded to the petition, but a representative clarified that no taxpayer funds were used in the installation of the sculptures. They were funded by a private donation through the Arkansas Parks and Recreation Foundation. Now there is video that talks about this where you can see and you can see them. Um, however, one of the hikers made an interesting comment about how if whatever it gets to get people out into nature, whatever works. So basically, that was basically the tone of it. You have to look at the video to see for yourself. But it's interesting artwork, if you want to call it art. All right, let's move on to the next story. Texas police officer rounds up loose goat, peacock. A Texas police department said one officer had a particularly wild day when he rounded up a loose goat and then captured an escaped peacock just 15 minutes later. The Irving Police Department said Officer Ryan Turner responded to a call about a loose goat along Highway 183. We thought we were getting pranked, but this is no April Fool's joke, the department said in a Facebook post. Police temporarily shut down the highway so Turner could pursue the goat, which was found to have fallen from a trailer on the highway. The officer attempted to use some Burger King fries to coax the animal into, surround, into surrendering, but he ended up chasing the goat into the parking lot of a nearby shopping center before capturing it. Department said Turner responded to another call just 15 minutes later about a peacock wandering through a neighborhood. The peacock, which was also found to be an escaped pet, was safely, safely captured and returned to its owner. Animal or human, you can run, but you can't hide from our officers and helpful community, police wrote. Now this next story... kind of a little bit on the wild side and makes you wonder if they're just going to leave them there or if they're just going to let them go on. However, Oregon truck crashes releasing 77,000 salmon into the wrong body of water. Officials attempting to re repopulate a river with salmon hit a setback when a truck crashed releasing 77,000 of the fish into the wrong body of water. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife said a tanker trunk was transporting about 1,002 spring Chinook smolts adolescent salmon for release into the Imnaha River when it rolled over alongside Looking Glass Creek, a tributary of the Grand Ronde River. The crash caused about 77,000 of the fish to wind up in the creek far from their intended destination. The Union County Sheriff's Department responded immediately and assisted with on-scene assessments and vehicle recovery operations. Small amounts of diesel fuel were quickly contained and did not result in a hazardous material spill response. Which is another problem because, as you know, in Pennsylvania, if it is the size of a tablespoon, it is a hazardous material response which a lot of cars leak that amount in a day. The fish came from Looking Glass Hatchery, which raises the Chinook salmon to be released for tribal and sport harvest, as well as to supplement the Imnaha River's wild population, which is considered threatened. The driver of the truck suffer, suffered only minor injuries and is recovering, the department said. However, they didn't tell us what they're doing with the fish. 
All right. Are you ready for a little what in tarnation? Not what in tarnation. Promises from God's heart. I'm telling you, it's a day, isn't it? This is today's devotion, and it's promises from God's heart for His grace. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2, 8-9 through 9. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalm 84, 11 from the Amplified Version. The Lord laughs at those who laugh at him, but he gives grace to those who are not proud. Proverbs 3, 34. The Word became flesh and took up residence among us. He, we observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Indeed, we have all received grace after grace from his fullness. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. John 1, 14. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is God's gift. Ephesians 2, 8. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. James 4, 6 My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Therefore I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 Now I, Luke, commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Acts 20, 32, the NIV version. And that is it for today's devotion. And today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. Um, I do have cats running around behind me, around, acting like fools. I don't know if I'm going to catch them in the camera or not. <laughs> but if you do see them, I hope you enjoy them. I will put a couple of videos behind this of the cats in themselves playing whatnot. Um, excuse the mess of the house. I have some cleaning to do. Just got beyond me. So, all right, that is it for today. As always, remember to be a little kinder to yourself. Spread a little love amongst yourselves. And I'll see you again soon. Bye. You see that silly cat? Baby blanket. This is using a size I crochet hook. And I'm using, both of these were done doing pound of love, one in soft mint and one in soft pink. Or maybe this is just pink. It could just be mint and pink. Anyway. Let's look at the ball bands for another video. Pastel green and pink. Thank <laughs> you.